They made a blackberry sauce on top of a, a smoked exotic rodent. <laughs> Delicious. Yeah, we should be eating these things. He's right, it tastes exactly like dinosaur. A good thing to bring more information to invasive species. I was the one who brought the invasive American bullfrogs. Wild turkeys are quite invasive. I like to th think that I'm eating some of the things that, that are invasive in my backyard. This is a really, we're having a great time here today. This is the invasive species cook-off. This is the fifth annual one that we've done. And uh, some of the years have been different than others. This year is a potluck theme where other people, everybody who comes can bring a dish to share with others, whether it has an invasive species as an ingredient or not, doesn't matter. Um, but if they want to be in the competition, the judging part of the cook-off, then it has to have an invasive species ingredient. My name is Adam. I came here to sample all this beautiful food. I'm going to try some nutria in multiple forms, some opossum and fried bullfrog. Okay, I'm trying this nutria. That's pretty good. That tastes a lot like pulled pork, but it's a, it's a rodent. Tom is the executive director and I think senior uh, ecologist for the Institute for Applied Ecology. And I believe you started this whole cook-off. And uh, like, how do people actually even know that's that an animal or plant is invasive? Because you, you can have non-native um, non plants or animals here, and they're not necessarily invasive. But your focus is mostly on the invasive ones, is that right? Sure, that, that's right. So, so that's right. I'm, I'm the executive director of the Institute for Applied Ecology, and we're a, a nonprofit organization here in Corvallis. But we work statewide and even nationally, depending on the program we've got going. And the Invasive Species Cook-Off is something we started five years ago as a way to um, uh, reach out to the community about invasive species and the impacts they have on our ecosystems here. And uh, it's become kind of a fun way to do that. It can be kind of a depressing topic to talk about ecosystem damage. And so it's nice to find a way to, to liven it up a little bit and make it kind of fun. And so having a competition for who can cook the best uh, dish out of invasive species is one way to do that. So we, we literally bring people to the table to eat these things and talk about them. Well, I'm going to give it a try and we'll see how it tastes. I think it's going to taste good. Oh, I also have a a, bull, a bullfrog leg here. I, I think it's a good thing to bring more information to invasive species and the impact on the environment. So I think it's good to educate people, definitely. A lot of these foods that we bring in uh, for an invasive species cook-off are really delicious and uh, great eating and this is really a foodie opportunity. Can we eat them away? Um, it may be possible to eat away some species. Uh, Asian carp in the Mississippi River, for example, if we, if we develop the, uh, uh, an industry to really go after that species hard, I think we could do it. Um, bullfrogs? I don't think we can eat them, eat them away. Instead, this cook-off is a way to bring attention to it and talk about other things we can do to uh, reduce the impact of these invasive species, to reduce their spread. How can other people get involved in that? How can you as a, um, a person who just owns a, a house or lives in an area or hikes or, or whatever, what can you do to improve conditions for native species and keep invasives from taking over? I think it's a great event. It's a creative way to look at invasive species and we're struggling with trying to deal with them and it helps to raise awareness. That's really what it's all about. I don't think we're going to eat them all. Prepared some frog legs. That's right. These are American bullfrog legs. American and bullfrog. That, that's their official name, American bullfrog? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're native to the eastern side of the North America, but they're invasive in the west. Ah. And uh, out here, they're a terrible invasive species. They really cause a lot of problems. And what kind of problems do they cause? They eat anything they can get their mouth around. They'll eat birds, rodents, uh, lizards, uh, other amphibians, other frogs, they'll eat each other, uh, they, and they carry diseases to other frogs, so they cause a lot of problems. And I think the term you used earlier was gape-limited? That's right. They're called a gape-limited predator. The only limit to what they can eat is their gape, how wide their mouth can get. Uh-huh. 
is is frying the preferred method, or are there other ways to prepare this? Uh, frying is definitely the most common way people cook frog legs, but you can cook them other ways. I've seen them in potato salad where they've been boiled and put in there. Yeah, very good. Very good, actually. Uh, but most of the recipes are focused on frying, uh -huh. and typically it's a it's a batter fry. So you, know, you drench them in a the liquid, then in, into the batter, okay. and then into the frying. Now, before you can before you can cook them, you got to catch them. How do you go about catching these guys? Well, there's two main ways. One way is to go out with a fishing rod and bait and catch them like fish. The way I've done it is by gigging, which is you go out at night with a spear and a spotlight and you shine it on their eyes. If their little eyes are sticking out of the water, uh -huh. little glistening eyes, it's how you can find them. And okay. then you slip in with somebody with a spear and, and you uh, jab And what would you compare the flavor to? Well, uh, they taste a lot like chicken, but they also remind me of dinosaur, because they're related to dinosaurs. The proof, as they say, is in the pudding. So, I'm going to try this. He's right, it tastes exactly like dinosaur. It's actually very, very tasty. He put flour and Cajun spices together, and first dip them in egg and milk and then dredge them in this and I have to say it's really nice. I'd recommend it. Hey. I came from Klamath Falls. Klamath Falls? Yes, so wow. this, is, this is fun. Been a good get together with friends and uh, great music and excellent food and I'm inspired to see what invasive species I can round up and Eat. Oh, so you're looking? For, are you looking forward to like getting there? They have, uh, I think, a recipe book. Yes. And you're gonna try some things in Definitely. Klamath. They yeah. might run you out of Klamath. I don't know. You think Klamath is ready for this? Possibly not, but you know, they've had three months to get used to me, so now we're slowly <laughs> getting them used to the, the real stuff, right? So. All right. Getting them warmed up. <laughs> Keep up the good work. There. Yeah. <laughs> I hope they will here too. This is fun. I hope to come back next year. Great. So here we are at this amazing cook-off, and we have uh, Carol Savinen here, and I'd like to introduce her and have her talk a little bit about why she's here. I'm going to judge the vegetarian. What do you think you're going to be finding? Do you think you, people are going to be using like a lot of butter to make some of the dishes tasty, or probably I don't know. I, I I guess not, just because there's a lot of vegans in this crowd. Oh, okay. Uh, but um, I think it's just they'll use a lot of spices and I'm not sure we'll have to go over there and see. This is um, Rose Marie Nichols McGee and she brought a dish that what's it called? Well it's called purslane salad because that is the key ingredient and it has in here I have watermelon, I have feta oh. cheese and I have spearmint. And purslane? And per lots of purslane and, and so is purslane a weed? Well, yes, but it's an edible weed, okay. and it has lots of nutrients in it. And you, here, have, have you tasted it? No, I haven't. And this grows in my yard. I should yeah, taste it. Yeah, you should. It's good. Yes. It tastes like cucumbers. Yeah. It is invasive in every state in the union. Is it an annual or a perennial? It's an annual. I've never eaten it before. It, it's really good. Yeah. Yeah, we should be eating these things and uh, they would be less of a problem. I like to think, think that I'm eating some of the things that, that are invasive in my backyard. I, um, in, in here is, is wild turkey with blackberries. And I, and I think that's that's really. I have had a turkey in my backyard, and I know that they're not native. They they're they're imported. Their turkeys are not local. This is my friend and fellow board member from the Institute of Applied Ecology, and her name is Lori Halsey. And Lori, what did you bring? I brought a breast of wild turkey, and this has been roasted, um, slow roasted in a cranberry onion orange sauce for a long time. It's very tender and very juicy. I decorated it with a little oregano and um, rosemary. I hope the judges like it. And, well, Lori, where did you get this turkey? Well, Bill Monroe, who is a the Oregonian reporter, 
uh, hunted the turkey on our branch and he gave us the turkey breast. So this is a turkey breast from Bill Monroe of the Oregonian. And, and so you have wild turkeys on your land. Oh yes. Wild turkeys are quite invasive. They're all over the place. If you're out in the country you'll see them on the roads, on the ranches. And yes. they, I have them in my neighborhood too and they roost in the trees at night and then they uh, defecate and the, the, and the they can be in the trees and it kills the trees. They can be very aggressive too. Can I try your turkey? Oh, absolutely. I want to see Are you a judge? Good. Yes. <laughs> I'm not for turkey. I'm oh. a vegetarian judge. Oh, you're a vegetarian? Are you a vegetarian? No. <laughs> oh, it's good. I it's, hope you so. wouldn't even know it was wild. I also ha have uh, uh, Nutria. Nutria is terrible on our streams and it was brought in and released when people couldn't stand the pyramid situation. They, they, they thought they were going to make their fortune. Also in here I have Starling, Possum and Nutria mixed. And that, that's pretty good. This is Ian Silvernail. What's your job at Institute for Applied Ecology? I'm a restoration ecologist. Oh, okay. And so, part of restoration is killing exotic animals, right? <laughs> uh, one Only... could say so. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on your interpretation, yes. Yeah. Well, so, what did you catch and what did you cook? So, I, I was trapper for one of the three animals that's in here. Um, this is what I'm calling a jerked new posling. Uh, this is sort of a uh, invasive take on a uh, turducken. For those of you familiar with the duck stuffed inside of a or a chicken stuffed in a duck stuffed in a turkey. Uh, so this is uh, starling pate, and that's sort of what you see as the binder for the meat here. And then ground opossum. Wow. So starling pate and ground opossum, and then wrapped in a debone nutria. Wow. How do you debone a nutria? Just take your time with a sharp knife. <laughs> what I've got is a nutria that's been deboned, and then it's been stuffed with ground opossum. Uh huh. And then I used a starling pate as a binder in the opossum. That sounds great. Uh, now, some folks are not going to know what a nutria is. Uh huh. So you yeah. need to tell them. It's a giant water rat. And I'm trying. I'm saying that to make it sound very appetizing. <laughs> Are you interested in trying a bite of this? Oh, absolutely! Are you kidding? Please do. You're I have. To I have never. And, I've and never a met a rodent I didn't like. There's many countries where we don't have to use silverware. So how about it? What do you think? Not too offensive. It's not offensive at all. If you can get past the idea uh, that it's a road, it's it's really very good. It is. Yeah, I think it's pretty tasty, and the and the ground possum is actually pretty pretty nice and moist and flavorful uh -huh. too. Uh -huh. Now the one of the re that this is invasive. It doesn't. It ought not be here. Uh -huh. What kind of damage does it do? Just more uh, displacement of other species in the ecosystem for the for the nutria. You know, to be honest, I'd be hard pressed to think of something for the possum. Um, they're transplanted from the east coast, uh -huh. uh, so I couldn't say that I know enough about uh, uh -huh. the role that they play in the system. Uh, starlings, though, uh, pretty common flocking bird around here, and they tend to displace a lot of other birds, displace net birds from nests and things like that, nesting cavities. Wow. That was very tasty, and you, if you hadn't told me that it was Nutria, I would have no idea. Um, I'd recommend it. Pleasant surprise? A very pleasant surprise. Yeah. All right, all right. So do you mind if I bring several Nutria carcasses to your place then? <laughs> and what is your name? My name's Ian. Ian. Yeah. Right. yeah, thank Pleasure. you very much, Ian. Absolutely. It was fun. You bet. It looks like Nutria slow cooked in with blackberry sauce on top. Got some wild turkey. Um, I'm not sure exactly how that's cooked, but it looks like it's pulled pork style type stuff. That's just chicken, I think. And that's some of the pig that they roasted, that huge pig. And we've got the um, shepherd's purse. 
with the watermelon salad right there. <laughs> what motivated you to uh, harvest a nutria? Uh, motivation? Well, they're a nuisance species. Okay. Take that, Nutria. That's very nice. It really is. Mm. I'd recommend it. Although I hope I don't get any Nutria in my garden. The criteria for the judging are presentation, taste, and what the conservation impact is of the harvesting of the invasive species that they've included in their dish. In some cases, it's multiple species. So, for example, one of the dishes here tonight includes nutria and possum and starling. And that's pretty exotic and pretty different, but I tasted it and it was really great. There's also snapping turtle. There's quite a variety of different things. Everything from, from blackberry pies to um, starling tacos. I mean, it, there's really quite a lot of different things. And some of this may sound odd, but it's all been terrific. It's prepared by people that really care about preparing food. It's really kind of a foodie, fun thing to do. So what's next for you after this? Maybe like a food cart? Invasive food cart. Maybe you'll be at the Feast Port, uh, Feast uh, Portland in a couple of years. Well, for us, this is an outreach tool, and I, I think what what we may look at is, you know, we hold this event uh, annually here in Benton County in the Corvallis area, but we may look at doing it in other communities as well. Oh, and I, for us, it's important not to just show up with food, but to really bring other people along and get other people to bring invasive species dishes, so that they're really getting connected to the concept. Having a large garden, we are confronted with a squirrel problem, not all of them native. And so I have cooked squirrel a couple of times. And the very first time that I did it, we had an invitation to a dinner party. And so I cooked up two squirrels and fried them in a cast iron, large cast iron pan and showed up at the dinner party with nobody anticipating what we would bring. And the big lid came off the cast iron pan and Bob and Barb Fankhauser uh, didn't bat an eyelash and they happily ate it and it was really very good. I now have the results of the Invasive Species Cook-Off and I want to thank every chef who brought in a dish tonight because I know how much work it is and I know what you put into it. This doesn't involve just going to the grocery store, it involves going outside and getting these materials and bringing them together and making excellent food. I want to thank you all for doing so. In the category of savory meat. I'm going to start with the second prize. Second prize goes to Cajun Bullfrog Legs. Uh-oh, that's me. <laughs> First prize, however, the most important prize, goes to the Starling Tacos. Pickled Queen Anne's Lace Slaw and um, a little Pico de Gallo with some sweet pea on top. In the category of dessert, second prize goes to the Blackberry Restoration Pie. Blackberries had to be collected from a restoration area, Herbert Farm, a natural area. First place for the dessert category goes to the blackberry muffins. What I did was I used um, the stone ground flour that you guys can find at your local farmer's market. The sa savory vegetarian category first place winner. That goes to the purslane pesto. Oh my gosh, so many invasive weeds in my yard. Uh, lots of mint, lots of purslane, lots of uh, lemon balm, and it, bring it all together, add some walnuts and lemon juice and oil, and you're good. 
<laughs> My side is uh, alcoholic and delicious. Aha! Alcoholic and delicious. With those feral fruit. Thank you, Oliver. First place for the beverage category goes to the Bald Hill Fizz. I took some invasives from the farm today, including, well, before I took Armenian blackberry, um, but I also got some lemon balm today. If you brought an invasive species dish tonight, thank you very much. Thank you very much.